Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Baal Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem Kakodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, their well, peace, and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and above all, back at it with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Baal Shem, Yahweh Shai. Lord's will, this video was edifying. And this lesson is going into why it's important to be fruitful, all right? And I'm just going to go right into the scriptures. Lord will, this video is edifying. This is Matthew chapter 7. Starting at verse 17. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. So this is referring to men, okay? Because men in the scriptures many times are likened unto trees. And I'm just going to get a quick one real quick. And Mark. Mark 8 and 24, and he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking, you know, so men are likened unto trees in the scriptures many times, you know, in a good sense and in a bad sense. OK, like scripture says, I've seen the wicked as a green bay tree spreading themselves. All right. Um, also, scripture talk about how all the trees of the garden envied Adam. All right. Meaning how those other nations, they envied uh, the sons of God. Okay, back then, because Adam stood out, or the sons of God, if you will, stood out amongst those other nations, just like how Jake stands out today, even among the other nations, okay? Even if they take on the appearance of, you know, an Israelite foreigner, if you will, okay? Nonetheless, men are like the trees, all right? So, Matthew 7 and 17, even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Yeah, so, if you're a corrupt man... Or a woman, you're gonna bring forth evil fruit. Okay, if you're a good man or a woman, are you gonna bring forth good fruit? Okay, and ultimately, what makes someone good? You know, following the ways of Yahweh Shemel Shai. That's what makes someone good. Okay, because here it is. You know, an average person might think, okay, he's giving a homeless person some food, he's giving a homeless person something to drink and some clothes because it's cold outside. Cool. The average person might think that's good you know that's a good deed but if that homeless person that individual is wicked all right then that's not good that's actually a bad deed all right and how would you know that other than by following the ways of Yahweh you know verse 18 it says a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit right because ultimately they've both been created one vessel is unto honor one is unto dishonor like it says can the ethiopia change his skin or the leopard his spots matter of fact let me read let me read it let me read it jeremiah 13 and 23 can the ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots they may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. Right. So two thirds of our people are accustomed to do evil. No matter how hard they try, they're just blinded. OK, no matter how hard two thirds try, they're still blinded and they're not going to be able to fully come into the into the knowledge and its perfection. All right. But the elect. OK, the elect are going to be the ones to bring forth the good fruit. OK. This is. Um, Verse 18, I'll read it again. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. So the Lord is getting ready to cut off the wicked of our people, man. All right? And cast them into the fire. Okay? You know? Oh, here's another scripture likening Israel into a tree. It says... Jeremiah 2 and 21, yet I have planted thee as a noble vine, a holy right seed. Okay. How then art thou turned into this into a degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? Yeah, and you can also link that up with Romans the eleventh chapter. That's another way to back up the tree conversation. Alright. 
Nonetheless, verse 20, wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Okay? So the point being, man, you see why it's so important to be fruitful? Because if you're unfruitful, if you don't bring forth good fruit, okay, you're going to be hewn down and you're going to be cast into that lake of fire, which is the icy beam nuclear missiles mixed with the laser beams from the chariots, man. All right, so it's a very important thing to be fru to be uh, fruitful. John 15 and 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purged it, that it may bring forth more fruit. All right, so ultimately, the ones who are in this faith, who don't bear fruit, who are being slothful, you know, they know the Israelites, but they're just, you know what I'm saying, they're not doing what the Lord requires them to do, they're not bringing forth the righteous fruits, meat for repentance, the Heavenly Father is going to cut them off, man, and ultimately that leads to their destruction, because if they're not attached to that true vine, which is Yahweh Shai, and the Heavenly Father is not being the husbandman towards them, guess what, they're going to wither away, man, because they bring forth no fruit, man, all right, matter of fact, let me get this real quick. This is Luke 13 and 6. And he spake, he spake also this parable, the Wadi Yabashmiel Shai. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it on the, it, the ground? And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after thou shalt cut it down. All right. So basically the point being, you know, the Lord is saying, look, I've given you all this. I give you all this knowledge. I gave you all this time to repent. You know, and you guys are still being slothful. You're not getting right. You're not bringing forth any fruit. Guess what? You're going to be cut down. So the Lord's like, all right, I'm going to give them one more year. You know, basically, I'm going to give you another little short period of time. But if you don't get right, I'm cutting you off, man. All right. So that's, that's why it's important to be fruitful, man. And this can apply to us here in the faith, man. We have to be bringing forth fruit. We got to be doing the work. We got to be studying. We got to be laboring. We got to be in the spirit, you know, building brothers up, doing things that are pleasing you about Shemel Shai. That's all bringing forth that fruit man okay verse 3 it says now ye are clean john 15 and 3 now ye are clean through the word which i have spoken unto you all right which is the uh, scriptures that's what cleanses us all right and you can also link that up with psalms 119 mm. and verse 9 Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to thy word. Alright, so we're cleansed by the words of Yahweh Bashmi al Alright, John 15 and 4. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. Yes, yeah, so in order for us to bear fruit, and be fruitful unto the Most High, we have to abide in Yahweh Shai, okay? Because He is our High Priest. He is our Mediator. That's the only way we're going to be able to get to the Heavenly Father. You know, we have to go through Yahweh Shai. Scriptures say that He is the door. All right? And a branch, okay, a branch can't just be bearing fruit if it's not attached to the tree and, and rooted into the ground, Okay? If that branch gets cut off from the tree, guess what? That branch ain't going to be bearing no more fruit than it already has. So we have to remain connected to our power source, which is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. All right? In order for us to be fruitful. Okay? It says, verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Why? Because the Lord is going to be supping with us in the spirit when we abide in him. Okay? 
For without me, ye can do nothing. All right. And if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. All right. It says, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done to you. Right. Exactly. Herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Okay. So that's the point of that right there. All right. So the heavenly father is glorified. Yahweh Shemesh is glorified in us bringing forth much fruit, man. All right. That's why it says. I will water my garden. I will water my best garden, man. Let me see if I can find that. Okay, and that water represents this wisdom. All right, this is Sirach or Ecclesiastes 24 and 31. It says, um, I said I will water my best garden and will water abundantly my garden bed. And lo, my brook became a river and my river became a sea. All right. So that's, that goes to show you that this wisdom is the everlasting waters and they keep abounding. They keep growing. They keep producing more fruit. Okay. That's why in Songs of Solomon, it talks about, you know, uh, for the Lord to eat the precious fruits of his garden. Roughly paraphrasing. Let's see if I can find that. This is uh, Songs of Solomon 4 and verse 16. Awake, O north wind, and come thou south, blow upon my garden. The wind represents the doctrine, but also the spirit, the wisdom. It says that the spices thereof may flow out. Let my beloved come into his garden and eat his pleasant fruits. Yes, yeah, so you want the Lord to be pleased with our fruits, man. All right, like we just read, herein is my Father glorified that you bring forth much fruit, man. So here it is. You see why it's important to be fruitful. All right, so now, how do you become fruitful? Okay, this is Second Peter 1 and verse 3. According as his divine power hath given us uh, unto us all things that pertain unto life, and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue all right so the lord has given us divine power man we have a form of spiritual power by just knowing this truth okay and actually i'll get a quick scripture to back that up too micah 3 and verse 8 but truly i am full of power by the spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. Yeah, that's right. The fact that we can go through these scriptures, break them down. The spirit can sup with us. We can go through the scriptures, edify, break the scriptures down, you know, so on and so forth. That's power right there, man. A lot of people don't even know how to read the KJV, you know, much less go throughout the scriptures and be able to break them down, man. All right. A lot of people literally cannot read the KJV. They have such a hard time reading the KJV. But that's just because the Lord hasn't given them the spirit to do so. All right. Like scripture say, none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. All right. Now, let me go back to the scripture that I had. Second Peter. Second Peter 1 and 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises which is the kingdom of heaven and everything that comes with it that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature yeah and we're being partakers of the divine nature first and foremost spiritually but soon to be physical as well all right having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust and besides this giving all diligence add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity for all these for if these things be in you all right because they were also in yahweh shai and like yahweh shai said if you abide in me and i in you you know you'll bring forth fruit okay so it says, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach. So you see how important it is, why these quite, why these traits are very important, because it it's gonna bring forth fruit within us, man. Okay, along with the chastisement. All right, because when you go to the book of Hebrews. Let me see. 
He was five. Let me start at verse. Um, I'll start from the top. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, referring to the chariots, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Okay? And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And we just read earlier how patience is a part of those traits that bring forth fruit, man. All right? Looking unto the uh, to Yahweh Shai, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of the Most High. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest he be weary and faint in your minds. Yeah, so if you're feeling weak, weary, and faint in your minds, you know, to run this race, think about Yahweh Shai and what he went through and use that as motivation. Okay, verse 4. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Yeah, pre pretty much, you know, yeah, we're being chastised, but the Lord ain't kill you, you know. Like it says in Psalms, you know, the Lord hath chastised me sore, but I am not dead. You know, roughly paraphrasing. All right, verse 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Like scripture say, the Father purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Okay. Verse 7. If ye endure chastening, Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh Shai, dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? Yahweh Shai was chastened too. You know, so if we have a Shabbos chastened, we have to be chastened. Like it says, in order to glor in order to be glorified with him, we must suffer with him. Okay. It says, For if ye endure chastening, the most high dealeth with you as with sons, for what son is he whom the father chasteneth him not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, referring to all the elect, which ultimately all Israel, if you think about it, but nonetheless, the elect first and foremost. Then are ye bastards and not sons. All right. And when you look at it spiritually, the scriptures say a bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, man. All right. So a bastard ultimately is that unfruitful tree, you know, spiritually. Okay. Verse nine. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live, you know, and a part of us being in subjection to the father of spirits is being subject to his son. Okay, because the scriptures say in J in John five, let's get it. John five and nineteen. Then Yahweh shall answer the son unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the father do. For what things the father so whatsoever the f it's like it. for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the son likewise. For the father loveth the son. And sheweth him all things that himself doeth, and he will shew him greater works than these that ye may marvel. For as the father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the son even so the son quickeneth whom he will. For the father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the son, that all men should honor the son, even as they honor the father. He that honoreth not the son honoreth not the father which hath sent him okay so that's the point on that right there all right that is the point on that right there so you have to honor the son like how you honor the father all right now let's go back to hebrews verse 10 for this, for they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit. Yeah, so sometimes our parents, they'll chasten us, you know, and sometimes they get a kick out of it. They do it for their own pleasure. You know, yeah, they might be disciplining us and correcting us, but sometimes they'll do things for their own pleasure or to get a kick out of it for themselves. Our profit, you know, okay, that we might be partakers of his holiness so that's why we get chastened so that the lord can bring forth that righteous fruit into us all right 
Verse 11, now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So that's the point on that right there, man. All right, we want those peaceable fruits of righteousness upon us, man. Okay? Because we just read earlier why it's so important to be fruitful in this thing, man. Okay? In Psalms 119 and 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Yeah, so it's good that we go through chastisement, you know, because it teaches us the peaceable fruits of righteousness to them which are exercised thereby, man. All right? When you're going through it, it doesn't, it might not feel good, but afterward, it yields a good result for you. Kind of like when you work out at the gym. When you're going through it, your body sore might not feel good, but afterward, your muscles grow back stronger. You know, so that's really the point. Uh, Lord's words video was edifying. Want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Chakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of the great Muslim, the Ruel, peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and above all.